The Nintendo Switch is such a wonderful piece of technology. So many great games that have a special place in my heart. It's breathtaking. Apart from the eShop, that's the place of nightmares. Yep, the Nintendo Switch eShop is living proof that Nintendo will STILL put any old crap on their stores with zero quality control. Yeah, remember that old Nintendo seal of quality? Well, it turns out that was in the same cardboard box as Metroid Prime 4 that's just lost and gone forever! Now look, I'm not a jerk. Right? I can obviously admit that there are a good amount of hidden gems and underrated indie titles found in the eShop. Heck, while I was looking for games to cover in this video, I came across so many titles that made me think, oh wow, I kinda wanna get that. But, they're very far and few between. Believe it or not, this video was kind of hard to make. Looking for weird eShop games on the Switch, worth talking about. Because a lot of these games are just bad. And not even like, funny bad. It's the kind of bad where you just don't have anything to say apart from, yeah, this sucks. The Nintendo Switch can act as a mobile console with a touchscreen, meaning there's hundreds of crappy, garbage mobile games that you could find on your phone. Games nobody wants to play, even if you make it nine cents. It's either that, or really generic Mario ripoffs. Side-scrollers with a pixel art style that wouldn't have worked in 1996, and definitely don't work over 20 years later! But, after hours of searching, I managed to come across a few weird eShop games actually worth talking about. Some surprisingly good, and others, well, you know, bad. Play that Switch sound effect! God, that's a good sound. Our first game here is called Gotta Protectors, Amazon's Running Diet. First, some backstory. A few years ago on the Xbox Arcade Store, I came across an indie game called Protect Me Night. Literally one of the best games in general I've ever played. It's a four-player co-op game where you got this princess in the middle of the stage, and you gotta protect her. Choose your class and use their abilities to beat up all the enemies in sight. If you can, I totally 100% recommend this game. Anyway, this game right here is a spin-off, where we take control of a thick, hopefully of legal age character, and run. This was a game on the eShop for about an hour before getting taken down. So yeah, this warrior, Amazon was it? Is apparently too thick. By the way, there's no such thing as too thick. And she wants to lose some weight so she can get back to a better game. I like Amazon. I wish she'd wear more clothes so when my friends walk in on me playing this game, they don't judge me as much as they normally would anyway. The game has a simple premise. Amazon runs and you gotta jump to collect the water to stay hydrated. Hey, that's a great lesson. But you want to avoid the beer because that's bad and drains your hydration meter. Hey, this game's teaching me a lot. It's got some nice animations. Was there a way to say that without sounding creepy? Probably not. But yeah, that's the entire game. Gets a little repetitive and boring after a while, unless you're into just watching this pink-haired anime girl run for hours. I'm not here to judge! If you lose, though, Amazon falls down and her thickness is so thick that it shatters the world in two. Nice. Game over. Falling ass bomb. Okay, next game. 911 Operator. Have you ever wanted to be in charge of someone else's life and be the sole reason on whether they live or die? Yeah, me too! Welcome to the Nintendo Switch! So in 911 Operator, you take control of a dispatch... person... I, I don't know the names, I'm sorry. It's your job to pick up the phone and listen, and respond to people's 911 calls. Why'd you call 911? My cat climbed up a tree. They could be about anything. A robbery, a fire, an injury, a murder. People call you up and you need to pick the proper response. Like a dating sim. Hello, I need help. It's burning. This is... Who wants this? I mean, I guess if this is a career path you want to go down, it's useful. But if not, you're just listening to genuine 911 calls and sending out the squad. You don't even get to see the action. That's like playing as Toad in Super Mario Bros. 3 and being like, Mario, the king has been transformed, please save him. And then for the next three hours, it's just you sitting in a throne room like... Also, there's a lady who accidentally calls 911 for a pizza delivery. I'm serious. 911, what's your emergency? Hello, 
I would like to order a big pepperoni with extra cheese, please. How do you possibly mess that up? What pizza place has a three-digit phone number? You are so under arrest! Up next is Gato Roboto. He's about a cat in a mech suit! Do I really need to go on or are you already sold? So in Gato Roboto, a guy and his cat crashes their spaceship into this mysterious planet. They need help. So the human decides to stay on the ship and radio for help and sends you, I'm just gonna call you Maple, out to adventure this planet. So just by looking at some gameplay here, you can tell that this is a Metroid type game. Or Meowtroid. <laughs> Yep, look for upgrades to your suit, navigate this massive planet, and destroy the wildlife. It's a very cute and charming game. There aren't any creepy aliens or anything like that. The bosses are things like a mouse in a mech suit. The visuals are the only kind of downside. While it is unique and very undertale-y, it gets a little stale and repetitive to stare at after long periods of time. But whatever, that's a tiny thing. Maple is here to save the planet. He's got a mech suit! Asking for anything more would just be selfish. This is Undead's building. A golden opportunity to call this Deadmont Hotel and you went with this instead? Gah, shame on you! Okay, so there are zombies in a hotel, and instead of playing as a hero getting to fight them, we instead take control of an elevator operator. Yeah, we look at these cameras and think, hmm, who needs more help? and you send the elevator to their floor, hopefully before getting eaten alive. You see, what I really like about this game is that it has a unique style, in that it looks like shit. Oh wow, you look like you could use some help. This is just like that 911 operator game, like why don't I get to take part in the action? Why am I essentially an NPC? Also, I absolutely love the Comic Sans. You know a game really cares when they use that font. Like, you have to go out of your way to use that! Even when I boot up Microsoft Word, the default is Arial. Also, you know, this is why fire escapes exist, right? You could avoid all of this if you weren't too lazy to just use the stairs. You know what? You all deserve this. Kitten Squad! It's a co-op roguelike similar to The Binding of Isaac. Just go from screen to screen and clear the room of enemies. It's pretty terrible, honestly, and the Switch is loaded with roguelikes! So, why did I choose this one? Simple! It's because Kitten Squad... was made by PETA. Maybe you could join PETA. Join me for what? No, for PETA! That's me! I'm PETA! That was the funniest thing when I was a kid. So, yeah, since this game is made by PETA, it's very in-your-face about how humans are terrible and how we all treat animals so terribly, and them doing nothing about it except taking your money. It's great. There's nothing subtle about it. It's like, look at this dying animal, okay? Ready to have fun? This part right here. It's whatever. Passable. But pretty generic and forgettable overall. It's everything else about this game that makes it crap. But I applaud you for trying, PETA. I'm gonna celebrate by eating this cheeseburger. <sighs> Yummy. You ever play pool and think, this needs more Rick and Morty face? Hey man, you do you. If so, then Pool Panic is the game for you! I absolutely adore people taking such a simple concept for a game, in this case, pool, and adding in so many charming little features and details to make it stand out from all the other pool games out there. The gameplay is what you'd expect, putting balls in the holes. Giggity. Sorry, I'm still on the Family Guy thing. The art style is really what gets me. All these funny little derpy faces really makes these balls come to life. There's gotta be a better way to word this. Everything from the angle of the camera, the fact that it's actively in motion, and just the fast-paced nature of the game easily makes this my favorite pool video game of all time. Not that there's many out there that I can remember, apart from the one in Wii Play. Pool Panic is filled to the brim with charm, always traveling to new destinations. Later on in the game, you go to a forest, for example, and ruin a family picnic! This is terrible! And hilarious, I love it so much. And with that, we've reached the final game, and it's a doozy, alright. Panty Party. Yes, I will say that again. Panty Party on Nintendo Switch. So this is our main character, Yurika. Our typical cute anime girl who's just trying to get to school. Meaning we're walking a very fine line here, especially about a game involving panties. Okay, FBI, I'm just trying to play the game. Oh, they're already here. 
So on her way to school, Yurika runs into... a pair of talking panties. It turns out this was destiny, considering Yurika is... the one who loves panties. A warrior of love. So the game starts up, and we are playing his panties. Okay, I'm going with it. And we need to fight all the evil panties and make sure we destroy them. You know what I really hate about this game? That it's good. Yeah, this game is genuinely so fun. You have multiple different attacks and abilities. The gameplay is smooth and crisp. It's fast paced and always keeps you on your toes. And the story is beyond over the top and ridiculous. It keeps me invested. I want to know what's next for these talking panties. So, long story short, if a person loves panties so much, they transform into them. Now, there are evil panties out there, alright? Trying to brainwash people into only loving panties panties, and nothing else. And if they're successful, the human race will be wiped out, and all that will remain will be... female undergarments. Like I said, I hate the fact that I really like this game, because now all I want to do is play it. But, for my own health and safety, and the FBI, I'll take a break. Just for a bit. So, those were some of the weird Nintendo Switch games that can be found on the eShop. While there is a ton of uninteresting garbage, there's always those hidden gems that may end up being your new favorite game. I mean, hey, if you're gonna go and dig for treasure, you gotta get through all the mud and dirt to find it. So, what's your favorite eShop game? Is it Son of a Witch? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I gotta get back to the panties. I mean, yeah, I gotta do that.